No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. It's 423, and I'm in here with the Stink Team. Gang and them, no lines with them. Gang Stinks shit. in this. <laughs> we know the truth. How you guys feeling? I'm trying to keep it together, you know. My brother's birthday was just two days ago. Long live the truth. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. Wait, I, before we get into anything more serious, though, like you were just asking me, oh, Adam, you did this? You got... A bunch of wax in front of you where you just yeah. toss this in the blunt? Yeah, put that in the blunt. Give it a little extra little ah. rosin, not wax. Rosin. So, What's the difference? I don't know. Big difference. But this gas right here, see how light it is? Yeah. You want the light, you don't want the dark. I remember like in the early dab era, everybody would be just running around with a big old can of wax before they had it in the stores and shit. That got a Sweet Tarts logo on it. Yeah, this Yes. That's crazy. I, I didn't really get into it like until like what six four months ago. That's when I started going. Listen, in. He got me on it because it's just a way to make the blunt hit like ten times harder, right? You know, when you're smoking weed over and over and over, you just be smoking just to smoke. It's like I'm not even getting high no more. Right. Because I smoked spliffs. I kind of got off the woods a couple of years ago, and now at this point, I kind of realize that like every, once in a while, I'll take an edible or I'll take a dab. And then I realized, like, oh, you're not really getting that high most of the time when you're smoking. And then you do one of these things, and you get really yeah, fucking high. You get the real high. Like, hallucinating <laughs> ass, like, watching YouTube videos, just like, uh, you know, it's, it's just a different level, you know? No cap. You got to keep it interesting. I see you got your FTP drip on, man. It's my boy Zach right there. Shout out, Zach. Yeah. This is reversible. Boy. I'm rocking it like this today. I'm going to turn it inside out, rocking another way tomorrow. It looks dope. Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, I had the first Zach interview back 2015, 2016. You probably got the first everybody interview. Mm. <laughs> but but Zach, like, I don't even know if he did one since then. Like, you see him on. Yeah, you don't see his face. You've seen some profiles of the of the studio or, or the warehouse where he ships his shit. But I don't think he's really sat down with somebody for an hour since then. Yeah, hell no. He's incognito. Yeah. Incognito is a he's like in the way, but out the way at the same time. He's level. lucky. I look up to him because to be able to have that kind of life where you make a bunch of money, you sell a product, everybody knows your brand, but then your face is not really recognizable That's like that. Exclusive. You and me don't have that choice. Nah, I, I hate being a rapper. You got to be on social media. <laughs> you got to do music videos. You got to be on camera all the time. You got to be on stage. It's it's dope to be rich and not really that famous. I wish I could have took that route and just been a businessman first. Mm. Now I got to be a businessman slash rapper. Mm. It's like it's good for the business, but if I would have did the business first, I'd been cool. That's got to be part of the plan as a rapper is how you're going to create a brand or a product that then once you're 45 years old and you don't feel like being on camera all the time, you could still you push could, it. You know, yeah, you could still push your brand off of your um, off of your clout. I think the Stink Team is that. Yeah, we got a whole... The Stink Team is like a brand itself. Hmm. It's just like when you hear the Stink Team, it just sounds like a brand. Yeah. It's just all about... What's that about? What's what you do with it? about that? What? It's like even if you... It's like when you say the Stink Team, it's like, oh, what's that? I yeah. probably heard about that. We've seen a whole generation of kids who, a shirt or something. Who, who grew up wanting to be part of that shit. Yeah. Some of them, it didn't really work out so well. Some of them, it did. You no. Know. No, you know that how that be. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, pick a side. That's why. You that's pick a fact. A side. You want money or you want clout? So okay, last time we did an interview, I had a very noteworthy uh, exchange for the dude who was managing you of some sort at the time, mm-hmm. Angel, and I, uh, it was viral. Everybody was talking about it. I remember the TikTok. I think that was my first TikTok that had a million views. W- where is he at? Is is that not a situation anymore? Uh, no, I don't know what he's doing. I know what I'm doing. Stink team doing. I don't know what he's doing. So he, how did you even end up having him be managing you? Cause I mean, you know, you have people. Well, to me, a manager is anybody that can do answer a phone if I tell them to. Like, you know, here answer a phone or here somebody about to hit you up about this verse or so anybody can do that. Mm-hmm. You know, cause like no shots at him, but during that interview, it was weird because me and you had had words with each other before the interview but then we like kind of talked got cool doing the interview had a pretty cool vibe like you're kind of giving me a little bit of a hard time and i'm kind of with you in the interview but then he was just gassing it the up and i got pissed as and people got to see me get I out of character you, like you guys were going to fight i'm like damn they're finna take it there man it's finna be- <laughs> they're used to seeing me be a snarky rude sometimes but they're not really used to seeing me just really like turn up on somebody and tell them to pipe down and no, so that was kind of unique i thought you guys were finna take it there i'm like damn <laughs> 
trying to ignore you guys. I'm like, oh, y'all yeah. going there. <laughs> right. So when did that situation end? Uh, with the um, the little dudes. So when OTM left, he left with them? Yeah. Did he come into the situation with them? No. No? Hell no. Okay. So, yeah. all right. So how did uh, how did that situation happen with, with them even getting down in the first place? And why didn't it work out? I mean, you know, business is business. Like, you know, some people don't really know the business, so they just say things out their mouth and then change their minds later on in life, you know. Mm. But me, I don't change my mind. Once I got a certain thought or I'm about to say I'm going to do this, that's what I'm going to do. Right. But when I guess they decided um, they didn't want to sign no more, I guess. I don't know. Right, that's what you Dub was saying. I brought, them, I brought them on the platform. I brought them with the, mm-hmm. like I was pushing them as if they were stink team. If they would have came off of, I don't want to sign a stink team in the first place, they wouldn't have got all them opportunities. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I would have treated them like how I treat everybody else. Right. It's almost exactly like what happened with Draco and Rambo. Yeah. Uh, kind of worse. Mm-hmm. Because they played the part as if they was ganging them and then they said oh no right we're gonna go sign these um deals on the low and go get paid but if y'all was signed then y'all was just supposed to give up the 20 percent. but instead they gave it to the manager right yeah and i don't know if i think that's a good (laughs) idea on their part because i'm gonna be (laughs) real like them being part of the whole stink team thing i feel like that was pretty much crucial to people them and mm-hmm. I, I haven't like looked to see what their views look like now or whatever but i definitely haven't really heard people talking about them the same way that they were talking about them a lot when you guys were all rolling around together you got the push you got the whole the jump start yeah that's the danger of uh trying to like take people's careers from the ground up is that sometimes you give them the sauce and like uh it just doesn't doesn't it's work like out taking somebody to the field for the first time they get their first little money now they think like they're on the same level but it's like bro you're going to have to get way more money than that first check to catch up to this type of shit. Like, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a weird situation because a lot, like, they start to get some kind of, like, knowledge of what's going on in the game, and they start having people tell them, oh, don't sign to a rapper. Mm-hmm. You know, sign to Atlantic, sign to Columbia, whatever. Just sign to a label. Don't see, try to have anybody else in between that. Our deals was kind of more not like, you're not, you're not just signing. You're getting a... You getting the sauce, like you learning the game. Like when you sign to a label, they're not gonna teach you the game. Right. They're not gonna teach you how to collect on ASCAP, teach you how to recoup your money on Sound Exchange and, and get your money from content ID and all that type of They're not gonna teach you that. Mm. They're just gonna sign you, they're gonna whoop you, and then you're gonna find out stuff later on. Then you're gonna complain about it. Mm. Nah, we teach people the same sh- you know. Right. As we're learning. We're still learning too. Mm-hmm. But we teaching you what we know as it go. Right. Damn. So, okay, what was up with that video of them getting jumped and their chains taken or whatever? Oh, no, I don't think that was no video of that. There was, like, surveillance camera footage of it. Oh, no, they was, him and Bull, they was just fighting or some some like that. Oh, okay. Nah, hell (laughs) no. Hell no. You weren't there for that? Nah, hell no. Okay. How, how, like, so you guys fell out bad with that angel dude, though, right? Because I seen a clip of him talking all kinds of shit. I feel like I didn't fall out with nobody. I really just do me. Right. I never really pay attention to, like, the internet antics. Okay. Do you think that you're an easy person to work with, or you think that— Oh, yeah. Yeah? Be the plug. I don't be doing I just be chilling. <laughs> I see, I don't know that side of you or how you are to work with, but you are the brother of someone who, as much as he's a legend, definitely not the easiest person to work with. Oh, yeah, he don't— <laughs> You gotta remember, I was doing the talking for him. Like, mm, he didn't okay. really, he don't talk to me, don't care about it. Mm. Like, I'm more on the business side of shit. Like, I kinda like know what's going on, like, but not really know what's going on, but I know enough to hold a a, a business conversation of, about music. Mm. Like, without it being weird or nobody feeling like they're getting finessed. Right. That's good, yeah, because that was definitely, you know, Draco was just, like, we started to see him networking more and socializing and being in the club and all that type of shit more, like, later in his life, but for sure, like, you know, networking is a huge part of becoming a, a big sure. rapper, and he just did not give a f- he was just, like, the realest person. Yeah, he didn't care about no features, no who popping, 
He didn't care about none of that. Right. Money, jewelry, and just whips and like, mm. that's all he really cared about. Facts. That's why when we seen like the Saweetie video, it was just like, how did this happen? Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> that was a that was a good one. Right you know he wasn't like sliding up in her DMs like let's do a song. And he was just so regular, just there at the video. She was just chilling, like mm. he wasn't really like, you know, too yeah. pressed about shit. Definitely. So yeah, I mean, you were talking a little bit about uh, keeping the truth alive and everything before, but what, what uh, like, from your perspective, what's the main ways that you go about doing that? Because I, I had a lot of people, like, you know, talking to uh, Jay Diggs the other day about, you know, keeping Mac Dre's legacy alive and like that, and it's kind of like that with Draco, where it's like, if you just ignore it, then there's nothing for people to hold on to. Uh-huh. They're still going to talk about them, but it's going to be more limited, whereas, like, you know, there's so much that you could do to kind of keep his out there you see them doing a lot with nipsey and shit, which yeah. is cool i try to just keep his name around just keep talking about him drop songs every blue moon create videos and shit that people never seen and kind of upload them and shit like that and then like on the 18th we doing a party for his uh memorial mm. and then just like invite certain people to his birthday parties and shit like that like certain shit and then I always put his face on merch. Right. Like, so little shit like that. Like, Does it make sense to, like, have his own fucking merch just permanently available online and shit, the way they do with Nipsey? We we could do that, but the estate will have to do that. Mm. In the estate, that's still going through its little court situation. So it's not as simple as it just being, like, you working with... I would his- rather it be the, the estate running it. So if all the money that... If it's, like, a clothing line from... His name, actual name, and mm. benefits off of him. I'd uh, rather it just be like going straight to him, not like it's just some stink team merch. Right, for sure. Um, okay, so uh, the other thing I want to. Oh yeah, so there was a, a OTM Draco song that they put out, and you got it taken down, right? You know, business is business. <laughs> so what was your mentality on that? Because I'm sure that meant a lot to them, and. I mean, uh, Y'all said y'all not stink team. Y'all don't want to, you know. Mm. So business is business, you know. Damn. So you feel like you're really inhabiting this heartless businessman role, or you just feel no, like just, they, they're f- around by even doing that in the first place? Like they, they knew they, you they would probably do knew. that, right? They already knew. They just mm. want the test to see if, like, we already told you. Y'all just want to play internet games, you know. Post it. Complain after you know it's going to get took down and cry. Yeah, is that uh does that go for everybody out there who got an unreleased no, Drago feature? If, if you got a feature, then get it clear. Mm. Go through the procedures to get it clear. You know how I many songs Draco songs I done let drop because they got it clear, and they gonna get it clear by me. You gotta get it clear by the state. Mm. Are there still like? It's a, let's, it's a decent amount of Draco songs. So there's a lot of verses that potentially you know if if Drake said like I want to put a, a Draco verse on my next album, you'd be able to say, like, all right, we got this one, this one, and this one. Like, you're just kind of keeping on opens. ice in case something like that happens? It's a couple opens. The opens I don't touch. Yeah. I don't even let... only songs I drop was the songs I got, and then he got features, but certain features I can't drop. So they be wanting certain songs to drop, but I be like, man, it's not signed. Ozuma, it's, that's Ozuna. Like, you know what I'm saying? He he got a random Playboy court. He got Tory Lanez verses. He got, like, certain people... It can get clear. Mm-hmm. But certain people, it's like, who the hell do I contact to get this clear? Right. But they be wanting those ones. I was like, damn, I can't drop them. It's like, damn. <laughs> Is it true that you made OTM give their chains back? This nigga had crazy. I mean, that's just word on the street. Hey, man, I don't do nothing, man. I don't. I, I ain't do nothing. I wouldn't be surprised if you're wearing one of them right now. Just secretly flexing on them. Nah, I don't care about those little dudes. No? Come on, I'm in a different, like, the fucking watch and chain, like, just small time. So it's not real beef? Like, if you see them, is it's it weird? Not, I never said it was beef. They just went to the internet and acted like it was like, a oh, f- those dudes in them. Like, damn, I f- me. I'm the one gave y'all the sh- I basically got. Right. 
Can't say fuck me. It's like being mad at your daddy. Like, you know what I'm saying? It don't work like that. Right. Damn. So, like, if they were to sincerely apologize, uh, you, you wouldn't be willing to just, they like, squash it, go back to rapping together and sh- They too big-headed. You think? They don't think they did anything wrong. Mm. So that's where it starts. If you don't think you did that wrong, you, you feel like there's nothing to apologize about. They think I should be apologizing. Mm. <laughs> Do you think that your behavior was all peaches and cream the whole time, or, or did you get out of in your feelings at a certain point? If you know, you know, like, I don't even, I hardly care about shit. So mm. if I'm telling you about something, that means it's a reason, you know? For sure. Because Ralphie's just not going around just telling people about themselves. I don't tell grown ass men about themselves. Mm. I've been in jail. I don't like niggas telling me about myself. What did you learn in jail that changed you, how you deal with people on the outside? That everybody's cappers. Really? <laughs> Everybody got the Maserati on four Gs. Everybody, and, and niggas got <laughs> niggas got jets and on four and and, and 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 everybody millionaires. And then you see them on the streets, and you be like, "This nigga's a smoker." Mm. <laughs> okay. Like that's what I learned. People not who they say they are. Like somebody can go to jail and be the toughest dude, got a squabble, know how to fight, and now he's respected as this. Joint, but on the streets, who the f- is this nigga? Mm. But in jail, you got a little squabble on you. You kind of not turning down phase. You kind of a real nigga. You could be King Tut, right? On the streets, fresh out. Oh, uh, that's the nigga that be off the bag again. He keep coming back and forth. It's hard. It's hard to hide it when you're broke yeah. on Instagram, especially the way shit is now, and especially the way that a lot of people that we know feel the need to have like constant new outfits and shit yeah. like that. It's just easy to pick it out. It's like, to me, I feel like, like, it's like, it's easy to be something on Instagram whether than being that same person on the streets, mm-hmm. not even in the streets, the real world. Like, you can be this cool person on the internet, but then you can walk in the real world and you're like, what the f- is this nigga? Like, you don't get the same respect. It's like, it's like kind of like trolls, like, just imagine them trolls. You walk in the party, and trolls just start you a whoop whoop yelling out crazy. Mm. That's how they is in the comment section. You can't do that in the real world. Probably every time you ever performed, there was at least one person in the audience that's, that's that had said no, the no, plug God. or got in your comments and said like, "Oh, you a or whatever." Like that. Sh- like those are your fans. Yeah. They might have just been having a bad day, and they know it's not going to catch up to them, so they no, just I, let you hear I it. I figured it out with that type of. Sh- I'd be like, all right, let me go live with you so you can mm. tell me about myself. And then they go live. They'd be like, no, I was just playing around for you. I'm a fan, man. I just wanted to see if you was going to respond. Right. I'd be like, I'm done. Like, every time I go live with somebody who's saying fuck me, they really fans. Yeah. At a certain point, you got to just kind of let go of it and just be like, people are going to feel however they're going to feel about no, me. No, you can't care about the internet. See, I know how in real life, how much people fuck with me. So I really don't pay attention to the internet. Like... I go off of like what I see in person because I know somebody would say something on the internet but wouldn't whisper it around you in person. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You're not that bold. The, the real life is weird because sometimes, you know, you'd be on Melrose, mm-hmm. you take 100 photos in a day. Exactly. You just, every single person you see is just freaking out. You got, you know, and then you go read a comment section about exactly. you on some <laughs> food page <laughs> like, and it's just like fuck? a thousand comments of like, this guy's a piece of shit, nobody f- with them, you know, and you're like, got so I was just outside all day. It's the <laughs> internet can make you feel like everybody, like this is reality. No cap, and that's like important. And, and you see how much it f-ks up, like kids. Yeah, like you, a 14 year old girl, just reading like all your mm-hmm. classmates hating on you, and it's hard for you to understand that that's not 100 percent what real and life is, right? And that's like uh, right now, I never seen so much cultures mixing because of the internet. Mm-hmm. Like back in the days. You didn't know what was going on in Atlanta and Texas unless you went to those places. Mm. Now people can study somebody's whole mannerism and how he move and talk and his lingo and how he do this and that and pretend like they're that all the way from just a phone. Like, See, that's why guys like you and you and Desto Dub and are good at what you do is because you guys are really from the hood 
but you're really good at like taking that shit that you grew up with and packaging it with music and art and clothes and all that shit and being able to basically like sell it back to people who exactly. some of it's people that grew up in the exact same circumstances as you but a lot of it is kids who maybe are from like a better background and mm -hmm. they got 150 dollars to spend on a hoodie or whatever okay. and they want to fuck with you guys because they see you as like real representatives of that culture right and then i i play like i don't just i fuck with the skaters i fuck with the hipsters i fuck with the the thugs i fuck with the normal people like that's not know. tripping like i can go in any one of those groups and still be me mm -hmm. i don't have to pretend to be somebody else like i don't have to act like a skater to go kick it with the skaters i can go hop on the skateboard and be a skater mm. i can go with the hoopers and go hoop with the hoopers like you know what i'm saying a lot of L.A. rappers would look at, like, skateboarding as, like, the most foreign fucking thing that they just but, never had any interaction with. But I don't know why, because it seemed like everybody in L.A. know how to skate. Mm. So they, they probably never got good at it, so they act like they never did it, but, you know, I picked up a skateboard. I was watching your uh, Go Skate Day vlog. Oh, my son. Yeah, yeah, that was dope. So, yeah. like, you know, how serious do you take it? Would you actually be willing to go broke? If you found a, a rail you wanted to do or some shit? If I was still young, like I said, and I never picked up. What are you, like 30? 28. See? I, I know you're I'm still young. Old. Come on. I'm 30, yo. Yeah, I'm getting 30. old. You're talking about it like yourself, like Damn. you're so old that I gave you a couple years you on that. You think about it. We, <laughs> with the Stink Team, probably 10 years ago. Right. That's like a decade. Yeah. That's... I'm old, nigga. Yeah, it's a sure. new generation of young niggas that's all coming out. I'd be like, how old are you? They'd be like, 20. I'm 20. I'm 21. I'd be like, damn, I'm that old. Like, and like I interviewed you and Draco seven years ago. Exactly. That feels, that is a, like very close to a decade. I remember that's Draco was up. calling niggas 30 old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that shit was around yeah. the corner. Who's he used to be saying that if you're over 25, you need yeah. to stop rapping? Yeah, shit. No, I don't think you need These to stop kids. rapping because most people start booming after, like, that's when they start figuring out, like, the actual identity. Like, yeah. some of these niggas, you could be a rapper, but are you? do you have identity as a rapper? Do people look up to you for knowing you're going to do this? Like, some people don't have that. They just got a bunch of bots, so they kind of go with the illusion as if they're actually popping mm. until the label hit the switch and then they got to do it all by themselves and then they're like, oh, nobody's helping me. Nobody fuck with me no more. Nah, you just didn't know. Your label was paying for all those features you thought was your rap yeah. friends and shit. There's people who don't know that the label is paying? Most of these rappers I, don't know really? that the Really? I figured they were paying. in on it. Nah, it, some people got relationship with rappers. That's just different. Right. But some people, they don't. So they label got to pay for all those verses. Right. They be like, oh, you want to do a song with this dude? They be like, yeah, hell yeah. They don't know. That came out of a million-dollar deal. They just, you probably got 200 bands cash, and mm -hmm. then the rest, the studio time and that feature right there, you ain't even know you paid him a 100 for that. Right. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Are you? Uh, have you ever been tempted to sign? My catalog too long. I don't have to rap really right now, but I do it because if I keep rapping, it just keep going up. Mm. I can... I can actually stamp that I'm never going to go broke type shit. Like, it's too many songs. Right. If I keep going, it's like the stock market. You never know which one is going to take off. But do you ever wonder, or do you ever worry about maybe, like, fucking up your financial future by wanting to get fly and play the part of the rapper in the short term? Yeah. I, s I got... I sell merch, nigga. <laughs> fucking skateboard, water, right. fucking soda, fucking weed, shit. My hands is in too much shit. Like, right. I think I'm fucking just kind of crazy because in my mind, it's like all this shit could get wiped out any day. No, it could. But at the same time, any one of those songs can mm. take off any day. And when you got 400, 500 to 1,000 songs released, you never know which one might re spark up or re go up. Like you just don't know. Mm. And my songs got a habit of just randomly hitting playlists. And I'm like, oh shit, this motherfucker hit this playlist. Mm. Look up, it did. Like slime me up, going so crazy right now. Shit, did like 1.2 million in like a month, then 28 days, just and it keep going crazier. Mm. And that song was like. Just a random song. Well, not a random song on the um, tape, but it was like it went up a year later. Mm. 
I ain't got, I can't control that. And you shit. don't even know why it was, it was probably TikTok. like a TikTok. Some yeah, little, yeah. some kid on TikTok. Shout out to her because whatever she did, she did a little TikTok and everybody in their little TikTok. high schools just right. followed the trend. Right. Yeah, it's crazy because like a lot of times if you look at the top songs chart and then you listen to the fucking songs, you will be like, what the fuck no, was that? Cap. It would be so weird, so confusing, so not the most popular song in the country. But then you find out that there's like a five million TikToks no, using the song. And it's just kind of fucking mind blowing. But y'all y'all aren't like actually on TikTok trying to make these trends pop off. I, actually, I tried to get on it. When I first found out she had it going, I made a little quick little TikTok and all the little shits. And then... People start doing it, but see, I did it with my actual sound, so I um, tried to get people to do it with my sound, but they were still using her sound, so I'm like, fuck it, just keep doing her sound. I'm gonna figure out how to collect on that later, but we gonna do it like this. Right. You know what I'm saying? I tried to get them. Yeah, no, definitely. So, are, do you feel like you're still just doing the merch side of things? Because, like, when I mentioned Desto Dub, you know, he's clearly trying to, like, really make his shit, like, more of a fashion image, you know? See, I can do that if I do a brand, but right now, like, I like doing pop-ups and, and, like, shows and shit to where, like, I can interact with the fans, sell them merch, sit out there, take pictures and shit. It's more about the interactions with the fans because mm. I don't really have no, no like, real push, so I'd rather keep doing pop-ups every week. And I, I, I said I wanted to go on, like, a, a merch tour, mm. like, the show for free. And just sell merch and sell like shit, but like don't just do the show for free type shit. Really, I feel like that'll be because the merch be going crazy. I ain't gonna lie. That is a good point too. Yeah. <laughs> merch be going crazy, yeah. and it's crazy easy to fill up a fucking big venue if you do free tickets. Because I remember we did for some reason we did a free show with Maxo Cream in Texas one year, like mm -hmm. a charity show or something. And yeah, like we fucking just packed like a huge venue, yeah, no think problem. About it. They saving money on the skip the line pass. Mm -hmm. Cause some people is die hard fans, so they gonna buy the skip the line, the VIP, the 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 meet and greet. They gonna buy the whole shit. So now they saving all that. Mm -hmm. Why not buy merch, right? Right. You know what I'm saying. You don't worry about making yourself too accessible to the people though, or does that not even exist these days? The people love me. Like, you know, I, I, I don't be feeling weird energy when I'm outside. Like, it's always, what's up, Ralphie? Let me get a picture. They think I'm not going to, they think I'm a boozy ass rapper. Like, I'm mm. not going to take a picture. But I'll be like, nah, come on, it's good. Unless I'm like, took 20 pictures and I told the last person, like, all right, you the last one. Now I'm finna hop in the car and slide mm. off. And then somebody randomly come. Sometimes I'll take it. And then sometimes I'll be like, Nah, nah, next time you ain't like, you know, so most of the time I'm like, well, just take a picture real quick. What if you're at a restaurant and you're like eating a sandwich? Gang and now. Let's do a quick <laughs> selfie, gang. Like, but like, it, they don't come off weird. Like, they right. come off like looking at first and they be like, damn, that's Ralphie. They tap the person next to them. Yeah. And then they always just be on some shit like, hey. You 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 wouldn't happen to be Ralphie the plug. I was like, yeah, man. They always got double <laughs> like, can check. Can I get right? a picture? Like, they don't want to come off as aggressive. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I don't be tripping as long as they do it respectfully. Yeah. What about when you're with the kid? Does that ever get to you? Baby Ralphie be on some <laughs> shit. He be like, my daddy Ralphie the plug. He be taking pictures and shit. I be like, bro, chill out. Like, he be on some shit. He wanted to be YouTube famous. Really? He be that? running around the house, jumping around, talking about some. Rara, record me. Subscribe to my channel. Woo -woo -woo -woo. I'm like, where did you learn this bullshit? Wait, how old is he? Five. Five. Wow, it starts that early. That's yeah. insane. Yeah, he, five, he running man. around cartwheeling and doing jumping, leapfrogging off of shit. Right. <laughs> like, Holy shit, because I'm remembering that when we did that last interview that you had your kid with you, uh, and he was being a fucking menace. Exactly. And I think, oh, oh no, 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 no. We did the Draco interview, and you would have been sitting next to him, uh -huh. but the kid was wilding, and you had to take him to the car and all uh -huh. that shit. So that was like, but that's crazy because now he's five, which is like way more of an adult. Like I'm yeah, sure he wouldn't no, be spazzing like that. No, he's nah. You should, you should, yeah. you oh, he's still going crazy. If I'd have brought him in sure. here, he would have been trying to unplug all the, the cameras, cameras wall, turn the right lights off. Oh he shit! Been, okay. Oh, Siri would have been trying to take them. Skateboard. My kid just turned three, and I'm like imagining her being. And way more laid back at five, but I guess you're right that they still be. Yeah, wild. No, I think he got ADHD though. He gonna be high <laughs> <right>, though. <laughs> 
Definitely. How 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 hard is it to balance being a dad and being a rapper though? I mean, it ain't too hard because my schedule kind of at nighttime. So, mm. like, it's every now and then I pick him up from school and shit. But he like a he an easy kid. He mm. just want to chill with me. Mm. Like, he be chilling with his mom too, but he want to chill with me. Right. So the most thing he do is call all day trying to get me to pull up. To oh, him. really? Like, he want to pull up all day. He want to pull up to the studio. He want to pull up and go everywhere. Like, wherever I'm at, I could be at dub shit. He'd be like, I'm going to want to pull up. I'm going to get dropped off. He'd be like, I'm going to Uber there. Like, <laughs> he on that type of time. He's five and he'll just want to Uber somewhere. I'm telling you, he his He's eating smart. is not eating food in the house that you cook. His eating is ordering on Uber Eats. <laughs> Uh, that's what he call eating, right? Like that, he crazy. Do you feel like maybe he's got a little bit too long of a leash? Like you're just kind of letting him do whatever the fuck he wants I to don't do. Let him do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's the girl, the I'll, mother. Hey man, I, I be on you. I'm I be on some like super tough dad shit. Right. I be correcting him like I'm like a lion with a cub. Like I'm gonna correct him the the raw way. Right. Like, I'm not gonna. Sit down. Don't move. Nah, I'm going to get your little ass over here. Like, yeah. It take a dude for that, though. It's weird. That's the whole thing with a kid is, like, figuring out when do I be nurturing and caring and soft and kind and understanding, and when do I just have to lay the law down and be like, no, it's bedtime. You're you're not, like, getting my attention if you fucking come think, out here again. When they think they on demon time, you got to match their energy. Mm. If not, man. Like, I could just imagine if I didn't match Baby Ralphie energy. Right. He'd be somewhere breaking TVs and doing some crazy shit. Mm. But if you let him know, like, nah, hey, he get to sit in the corner and try to cry. <laughs> right. But when they get super fucking upset and they're screaming at you and crying and shit, it's kind of like that's when you need to, like, get low, get quiet, just, like, really try to talk to them and shit. See, I wait till they done crying. Mm. Like... I'm going to wait till you done and then be like, all right, man. So now you know don't do that bullshit again. Like, are you, mm. you know? I like but it. Now nah, you're not finna just. Crying is the first way to manipulate. Oh, yeah, yeah. They so figure that out real early. you fake cry and then I I fake get up on you. Now you're not crying. Like, <laughs> now nah, you're not finna play with me. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. Um, okay, so are you uh, are you still suing Live Nation? Yeah, but that's court process. It's just like a really long yeah. process. You know how that process be. Right. It could be years before we really know what's going on with that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Makes sense. Are you, uh, you still talk to anybody from Shoreline? I mean, I'll be here in Phoenix every now and then. Mm. How'd you feel about seeing OGZ and, and him reunite? It was cool. Good for them. Right. They need to get in the studio and go drop a tape. You think that they're really fucking with each other, or you think this is just them realizing they can make some money together and you know saying, me, fuck I, it? I really don't be like, I was, if they get together, they get together. If they don't, you know, that's them. I would, shit would be, when I came back, I thought they was together. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really know what they got going on. But I mean, that would be like the ultimate tour that would probably fucking have you guys playing huge venues this gate. Greedo, Shoreline reunited, even if they ain't really fucking with each other, they're gonna be fake cool with each other. And then Ralphie and whoever with the stinks and shit, that would be a fucking crazy ass yeah. nationwide yeah. tour. The, 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 we would love to see that. That would be so crazy. Yeah, that'd go crazy, but you know, everybody in their own little worlds. Yeah. That's why I figured out everybody in their own worlds. Like, no matter how much people want shit to be like a certain way, everybody got their own shit going on. Mm. So. People like to hold on to what they got going on. Some people don't care. You know what I'm saying? I mean, for a lot of artists, I feel like there's a time period in their life where they feel like, oh, this is all about gang. It's all about hanging with the homies and 
and, and just being cool and we're going to be best friends forever. And this is definitely what I'm describing is, is basically what happened with Shoreline. And then at a certain point, they sort of just snap and are like, oh, actually, this shit is about making as much money as I can exactly. from the rapping and, the, so and whatever I got. The you know, it's like that. Everybody kind of has that when they're young. They feel like their friends are the most important thing. And then they start to get older and they realize their family or their business or whatever is the most important thing. But I mean, I don't know. You feel like you've kind of had that transition at all where you get kind of disillusioned with a lot of the people? Nah, hell no. I've always been in my own world. Like, I never really was like, I'm cool with people, but I never really been like, I need to chill with people and I need to hang around people. Like, mm -hmm. Everybody know me. I, I be dolo half the time. Mm -hmm. So I never really, I don't know. I can't explain it. Like, I'm just, I can be me by myself. I don't need a group of people to be me. Right. Definitely. What's going on with uh, Chief and Heavily? Because I've seen you guys had some pop-ups on Melrose and shit like that. How hard are you going with it? He's the fucking man. You know, just dropping merch here and there, trying to get my shit out there, you know. That's all it is, Keep it, keeping the truth alive, you know. What's the brand all about? You just smoking hella weed, chief and <laughs> sipping and dripping heavily. That's all it is. That sounds about right. Mm. Yeah, you know, sound like the culture, just the that's lifestyle. That's the culture. That's the lifestyle. You customize this hoodie? Yeah, custom. You know, he added little drips and splashes. Yeah. And I like it. Chief and be going crazy. This one Dra <laughs> Dra Draco actually had too. Oh, he wore it, or he yeah, had the he same one? It. Yeah, the same one. Wow, that's legendary. Mm. Holy shit. You, you mentioned uh, sipping. What's the state of your uh, drug intake these days, Ravi? I be sipping every blue moon. Like, yeah, you I seem a little bit coherent, line. more so than in the past. Ah, I'm always like, I always been the type to pour line every blue moon. Like, but Draco, he go crazy. Like, his go life was like a fucking a, blur. A photo of eight a day, <laughs> like he he going crazy, like go crazy. I always told myself if he can do this shit like this and still be good. Mm. I'm good with my little deuces and lines and shit. I be pouring like, as long as I drink a lot of water. Right. Oh, the water for sure. Nah, because like when you you hear people from Texas talk about how they got all these legends who never passed away off lean or whatever because they do a more moderate amount. It's mm -hmm. not a fucking contest. Exactly. They hydrate. They take care of themselves a little bit and they can engage in it. But like over the years, there's been so many people Most that we've people, seen who no, they they not dying off of juice. They're right. Dying off of fake juice. They, mm. If you really, yeah. if you really pay attention to people that died off of juice, it's not real juice. I mean, people be having liver, liver failure and shit, but that's niggas that ain't drinking that water. They going hard. Mm. They never just de they always dehydrated. They, they just they be smoking weed all brew. day and they drinking that bullshit. That so shit. there's a lot of fake lean going around now. Yeah, hell yeah. It's called homebrew. How they, is it? They. They it's fucked up? Home brew. Bro, I bet it's all right. <laughs> no, the thing is, it <laughs> don't it taste nasty. Tub. It tastes, it, some, to some people, they think it tastes exactly the same. Yeah, because I'm not a fucking lean <laughs> wizard. And I always wondered that. I'm like, why is the cartel not whipping up some fire fake lean? See, to me, it's not really about being a wean, lean wizard. But if you've been drinking the juice long enough, you mm. know what it's supposed to taste like. Can't nobody hand me nothing and say that's that. If And then if I taste it, it's not that. Uh, you can't convince me otherwise. But as the lean game evolves, it's like people used to hate on red. Now everybody seems happy to drink some red. People used to hate on green. Now you got people really flexing green in music videos and shit like that. So it's like as time goes by, I feel like people are just going to be like, all right, let's drink this fake shit, especially if it's fire. I feel like that's because the walk. I mean, it started with the act. Yeah. Justin Bieber fucked that up. <laughs> they gave us walk. Walk was cool. They yeah, gave they us, like, they're dropping it off. You know, you, know, you, know, you know they gave it to us, like, oh, we're going to give you something similar, but not the same yeah. shit. Like, they know what the fuck they yeah, doing. Like, don't ever bring that green, though. Like, that green, you don't fuck with that. That green out of the lineup. Mm. That ain't. Uh, nah, but then you had the glass red. Yeah. Then you had the high tech red. Then you had the high tech acorn. <clears throat> then you had the acorn. Like, then it was the, what was that shit? The, well, quality too. Quality, par, the par. par. The par fucked it up because it was a yeah. bunch of fake par. Uh, the shit is fake, period. So that shit was going around fucking up, killing everybody. Mm -hmm. That's when it hit hard, the par. That's when a lot of people start just randomly dying off the juice. Really? 
Do you think the game will ever just be over? Like there just won't be any other shit left. Hell no. That's like saying niggas gonna stop smoking weed. Hell no. <laughs> right, they'll find a way. <coughs> sure. It'd be hard, but <coughs> it's gonna get it. Smoke it. Yeah. For real. That That's what you see a regular weed fuck. blunt, it, it might do that if you, it's some super pressure. You put that wax in it, it's a whole different universe. It's Rosin. Just like psh. Rosin, sorry. Yeah. Keep <laughs> it go get on your ass. <laughs> he ain't playing that shit. Wait, <laughs> wax just doesn't burn the same or what? No, wax is like they put a bunch of chemicals in that shit. Oh, really? The rosin made with like ice and water. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen them make it before. Okay, it's been a while though. Damn, you seen him make it? He was in a good place. You used to watch some documentaries. And <laughs> <shit>. yeah. <laughs> or even like the compression, like the machine where they just fucking smash it and it all yeah. comes out the sides. I forget what that shit was called. Um, okay, but so are you still fucking with the perks and shit like that, or is that era over? That's like, I think a head be hurting. Mm. Pop a perk every blue moon. Like, mm-hmm. You know, that's some shit you just <clears throat> do whenever it's like juice. It tastes good, so I pop. I drink juice, so it's like I don't have to be in no type of mood to just all right. Let me get a line mm. type shit. It tastes good. It goes with my weed when I'm rapping. Smoke my weed, drink my juice. Make the weed taste better too. It do. Oh yeah, smoking and drinking lean. <clears throat> kind of get an appetite off that shit too. Oh yeah, get some food. Yeah, because I don't really, <laughs> oh, I don't yes. really be fucking. Eating this shit. Mm-hmm. I know I'm lying. <laughs> I be fucking Uber Eats in it. And DoorDash got me in the headlock. <laughs> <laughs> they got me in the headlock. I had to, like, bro, I'm not fucking with this app. I tried to delete it, but I can't delete it because I always got to order some random shit and send it somewhere. When you drinking lean, smoking weed, and you got some Uber Eats coming, you just feel like this is the good life. Yeah. Like this is this is sweet just where I need is, to be. Sweet life is Zach and Cody. But I work so much and I got a kid now, so I just never let myself do that shit. But as a rapper, I feel like you got a lot of times it's like a good excuse. Yeah, I be in the studio a lot. I be recording. Mm. That's one thing I do do. I might drop a tape on Christmas too. Oh, nice. Um, anything special planned for that or what's the idea? Um, I guess I'm here rolling it out, rapper overnight. Uh, That's <laughs> what you're gonna call it. Three Ooh, fucking okay. what is it? Christmas Day type shit. Oh okay. But yeah, um, I fucking I don't know. I'm just dropping some shit. Mm. It be dry. Nobody drops shit, so I'll be dropping shit. I tried to take a break. Drop like six tapes. That ain't too much. Do you feel like L.A. rap in general is dry, or just rap in general? It's a couple rappers doing their shit, but it's like. Rap and dry, just period. Every week, it got a small attention span. I always say this shit. Like, every week, it's somebody that sound like the exact same person, just in a new, advanced way. Mm. But nobody just coming out of nowhere, just original. Like, that's what's going on right now. Yeah, it's weird. Cause it's like, I used to be the kind of person when I was young who would go buy a CD and spend 12 bucks, 15 bucks to cop a CD just because I needed those 10 songs, those 15 songs in my life. Okay. And now there's infinite fucking music it's in and the kids don't give a fuck. Everybody want to be a rapper. Yeah. Everybody. Nobody wants to be the, the producer or the cameraman or the, the fucking manager or the... Everybody wants to be like a rapper. Mm. Even females. So. <laughs> now they, they're popping, so that's Man. changed everything. Everybody got identity Man. crisis right now. Uh, <laughs> People got main main um, person syndrome. Main, yeah, main character syndrome. Yeah, yep. they all think they're some, it's because of Instagram. Mm. So people just sitting at home, they're popping on their phone, but when they go in the real world, like okay. I was saying. So you're a rapper, so you like buying drip having chains is all an investment in your career so you can justify it. But if you were giving advice to some dude who got like, you know, he work in an office, he got a cool job, but he want to be, he want to look like a rapper. He want all the girls to be feeling like he got money and shit. Would you recommend to him to just save his money and just be on some normal shit? Or should he really be invested in, in looking have, like a rapper? You always got to have something going on the side, even if you're working. Mm. It's LA. Your job alone is only going to pay your rent. It's not gonna pay for your car no. Mm. It's not gonna pay for for the gas, the electric bill, all this fucking Amazon, Uber, each shit you subscribe oh, to. It ain't gonna pay for all that shit. Mm. So 
you just got to do what you do and do it smart. Like, like I tell people, if you're going to do something, do merch. Because mm. that investment is already like, that's going to get investment. you some money. Merch is going to get you guys some money. A lot of people would be better would be smart to kind of humble themselves and realize that maybe they're not meant to be the person with the clothing line, exactly. but they could be the guy who's helping someone who has a clothing on line. The marketing side. Building their, their repertoire that way, their resume, and able to, you know, kind of build a, a, a way to make money that way. But so many people just want to be the star of the fucking they show, want to be right? TikTok famous. Mm. <laughs> That's that clout. Everybody converting everybody from Instagram to TikTok, and they're like, oh, yeah, I can just go be famous on TikTok. <laughs> Yeah. I ain't got to do nothing. I know girls <laughs> who, like, started TikTok and just had one random TikTok get, you know, 400K. And so, as a result, the rest of their life, they're, they're making TikTok. TikToks just trying to yeah. get that feeling back. Yeah. Of just having 150 people back. comment on their shit. And it's one of those apps to where it's not really, like, Crazy. it's not really fucking... It's nobody just controlling it or nothing. Mm. So the only person controlling it is you. So if you go live and say some stupid shit and they ban you, fucking lie, that's because you was doing some dumb shit, smoking in the background yeah. and shit. It's, it's only you that can fuck that app up. That is the crazy thing is like, the, yo, TikTok will break your fucking heart. I know so many people that got popping on there and the whole yeah. account got deleted just yeah. for some dumb shit that they didn't know. <laughs> you could say anything on there and get deleted yeah. and lose your fucking That's account. Crazy. So you can walk past while I'm on know. TikTok with a blunt and they gonna zap me. It's over with. Wow. Right. 30 days. Or like, I'll, t I'll be talking to a girl and she'll be talking about something that she was doing, shaking her ass on there. I'm like, yeah. You, I, yeah, they and, and, it. But she'll be like, oh, this, this other girl is doing the same exact thing. I'm like, listen, you cannot expect this fucking app to be yeah, fair. Yeah, no, that app is pr it's bots controlling it. They mod it's, it's got like, moderators and shit. Yeah, it's like a, a fucking Chinese concentration camp on there, bro. Yeah. They're just making you do whatever the fuck they want. They, they, they can make you pop <laughs> and they can shut your shit down, mm. too. <laughs> I don't know why this came up in conversation, but I saw uh, my man Dejon Paul saying that he would fight you for 50K no, in a boxing laughing. match. Like, I'm like, damn, dude, everybody just think I'm just like, do they believe all the internet shit? Like, bro, I've been going to jail since I was like 11 years old. Mm. I'm like a baby kid. Like, I went to six middle schools. Do people just think like I'm just like... I could beat Ralphie ass. Like, dude, right. that's fucked up. That's funny. That's hilarious to me. But would you whoop him for 50K? Come on. <laughs> that's my boy, though, man. <laughs> but, like, come on, man. Have you been happy with the grades that he's given you in the past? I don't really care about the grades, but I'm going to say something if it's, like, false. Mm. Who's going to yeah. have the 50K? Hey, you want to see that 50K? I don't know. Yeah, where's the 50K? Not, not saying he don't got it, but, like, <laughs> Typically, like pretty famous people will get paid less than fifty k to box. Yeah, it's it's not super easy to get a bag for doing a celebrity boxing thing at this point. I don't know. That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. You want to do it in the fifty fifth Street alley? Nah, I gotta be professional. <laughs> we gotta have the count. We gotta get the count right. We gotta do, do ticket sales at the door. We gotta make sure everything is legit. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna drop a record a report card about your boxing performance? <laughs> uh, watch, <laughs> watch that shit back and just grade your striking and shit. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Strike's gonna be official. Do you do you respect what he's doing though by doing nah, the report I, cards and and you know I I, I, I think fuck it's with dope. the whole scene. Yeah. I fuck with what he doing, you know what I'm saying? But you know when he be on that bullshit, I think he be trolling, though. He just be trying to, he know how to get people riled up. Mm. That's why I fuck with it, because he know how to, like, post some shit that you gonna look at and you know kind of <laughs> like, man, hell, dog. <laughs> right. He know how to get people riled up. But then again, it's only his opinion. It's got to be a weird feeling giving somebody an F and then seeing them around. Yeah. And just wondering, like, how does this dude feel about the fact that I just but, said your whole existence that you've worked on your entire life is fucking ass. But see, at, but everything and every aspect where we do what we do and we do it to the max. Mm. So it's like, who going harder? Right. <laughs> like, you can say all these people are doing this, but like, it's all an illusion. Like, mm -hmm. as <laughs> long as the label, please. Like, One of my uh, my YouTuber friends, uh, Trapola Ross, he he had a, a video titled "The L.A. Robbery Squad That <laughs> Only Targets Asians." <laughs> Fuck. And it was all y'all in the thumbnail. <laughs> That's fucked up. That's a pretty good YouTube title. What, what they, what Draco said, they put our pictures on the screen. They like, damn, they icy. 
Damn. <laughs> What's the point? Yeah. Do you resent people making That's YouTube videos and characterizing y'all that way? I mean, some people be having me cry. That's all we do is look at this shit all day. So I'll be watching this shit. I'll be like, damn, people really be having their whole little thoughts Everybody and like illusions about this uh, shit. Like, <laughs> you, right. you, they create like a whole a whole world of stink team drama and just put it all in one. Like, mm. It'd be funny. Yeah, there is like a, an effort by certain people to try to like turn the stink team into a soap opera. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just so they can have something to make YouTube videos on. about. Like, I mean, like, like, this be regular, everyday, random bullshit. Yeah. Nah, definitely. <laughs> um, where are you at with Soldier Boy? <coughs> Not a fan? I don't really be on the internet with the, like, the antics and hmm. shit. You know what I'm saying? Because Dub, uh, Dub basically said that he wouldn't fuck with them. And then Soldier Boy went on a fucking rant saying, fuck Dub, fuck Adam 22, all this shit. Whereas, like, why the fuck would he expect Dub to fuck with him when he's made it a point to diss somebody that Dub was really close with? I mean, you can't hold that against him just because he's a clothing dude, right? Yeah, you know how he's that a shit wanna be. He's a wannabe. He yeah. wanna be Draco so yeah. bad. That's really what Clones. Hmm. <sighs> he's been copying so many rappers over the years, though. It's like... He and stopped with fake Draco. jewelry too. He wears fake jewelry. I seen him wearing some fake Gucci before. <laughs> fake watches too. For real. Fuck. Damn, that's a, a a crime punishable by death or what? I mean, I wouldn't. Crazy. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't dare wear that. So if you found out the rapper that you currently fuck with had fake chains, it would just be like. A devastating Damn, blow. Man, pump faking. Damn. I've been thinking I, because I treat this like a sport. Like mm. so, I try to like, like damn man, I gotta give me some new shit. Like it's been a minute type shit. Like it's a sport. So when you out here playing with the sport, and it's like you got niggas thinking that you going crazy and you ain't going crazy. It's like you pump faking. Like oh. I remember Young Scooter saying like, I know he fake because he got fake jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, I, you, I didn't understand like, back in the day, but now I see the way the rappers view it, and I get mm -hmm. it. Not rappers, just like if you if real, you gotta be real with yourself first. Yeah. Like it don't have nothing to do with being a rapper. Like, cause even if we wasn't rapping, we were still having jewelry and shit. So it's been a sport since then. Mm. So niggas out here playing with the fake shit. Nah, fuck that. Yeah, I respect it. Um, there was a clip of that. Instagram live that was going a little viral it was basically Frosty the Snowman being mad at his homie because he said they keep buying lean from the stink team. They don't even like talk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, sometimes you got to cop some drink off a of op, right? <laughs> I mean, you might not even know you're selling to somebody that somebody else would feel a way about, right? <laughs> not that you would sell it, but. Yeah, shit, Hypothetically, I don't know who niggas be getting juice from man. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't yeah. sell juice, man. Yeah, but it's like a communal thing, you know. People come together to do it. It's not like a sale, really, right? Oh shit! Fuck juice. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be able to cop some lean from somebody if you knew that they had Hell, I'm not, op homies? I don't even no? play like that. Hell, nah. Okay. I already got my community. Hmm. I'm a real drink sipper, so it's a community of the drink. Right. Everybody got their own community of sippers. I got my old heads in. and shit, grannies and no. uncles. Do you remember the Nexus Social Lounge era? That that big ass warehouse that Dub used to work for downtown. The little Indian dude Mike was the dude who owned it and shit. You know, we didn't really go out to shit like. That. Oh, this is before your time. Yeah, you know, we were somewhere probably on O three two fucking. Chilling. Oh. I just remember that they would be buying so much lean that they would buy out the lean man to make like give him extra to sell everything to him so that the other big time lean drinkers wouldn't be able to get their hands on it. And that was like a crazy revelation to me. Yeah, the juice is a crazy juice game. game crazy right juice game crazy. These and this this is five, six years ago. This <laughs> is way expensive. back you can't in the day. Do that right now. That shit going, you try to buy all the juice, you going to be, be a million. You going to be in the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> nigga pocket going to be broke. Right. Hell yeah. I'm trying to buy all the juice right but, now, currently. Yeah. <laughs> but then once, once you have all of it, you it's can charge good. more for it. 
Yeah. Supply and demand. If there's yeah. no supply, the demand goes way up. Nope. We're going to drink it all. <laughs> drink it. <laughs> um, so, okay, what what is the best trick that you could probably do right now? If you were trying to get an Instagram clip, what's the best clip that you could probably bust out in a skate park session right now? Inward heel. Inward heel. Inward heel. Over what, like a hip? Over like probably like a little, off a gap or something. Mm. A little ledge. I, can I like probably it. kick flip though too. Probably even tray flip if I lose some of my weight. But right now, Inward Hill, I can do that. I think I seen, this is my setup board because some people ride too loose. I seen uh, Rich the Kid do a tray flip before. I think nah, back in the day. Kind of good. Yeah, but you know who's dummy nice is that BLP kosher. I heard he can do like a kick flip and shit. Oh no, he's nice. He got crazy pole yeah, jam know, clips I, and shit. I he got real he, video parts. Oh no, he probably hard. But look, I seen Rich the Kid do like a fucking. A big flip off some crazy stairs and shit. Mm. Do some reels. I'm like, oh, yeah, he going yeah. kind of crazy. I ain't know he was going that crazy. Right. Like, he kind of was looking kind of exclusive on the board. You got a little bit of competition out there, though. Be a big coach, man. Right. I'm putting all my money on him. I wonder how much he actually still skates, though. He probably do. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. He fuck around in the backyard. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> what uh, What's going on with the whippets? I don't really fuck with the whippets. You don't fuck with them anymore? Like, I watched the whippets like, give niggas they down for us. Like, really? So I seen how that shit work in real life. Yeah, that's a weird one. Certain times when I, because now being on Melrose again, some people will come in with the fucking tank, and I'm like, oh shit, like, because they some people do a good job hiding it on the internet, but then you see them in real life, and you realize like, oh, they really off that shit. Yeah. But so you seen people fuck their whole life up off it? I mean, I see niggas start changing over time. Really? All out, like. Just start, <laughs> and then they start acting kind of too fucked up. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It definitely turns you into a weird dude. I'm, I don't trust any drug that you have to do like every thirty seconds. Even when I was doing it, like I used to hit it, but like I wasn't trying to just clear like two, three fucking whippets. I was just trying to like, all right, now I'm too hot here. Pass the bottle. <laughs> yeah, but when I'm on one, you know it's cool. For the little moment at the studio type shit, but I ain't been off that shit in so long. Yeah, if you can control it, I feel like it's like a cool thing to fuck around and do a little bit. But if you're gonna allow yourself to be the kind of person who's gonna do it like, all I'm fucking do this night, all day, like nah, yeah, hell, you nah. gotta have some self control if you're gonna fuck around with that shit. That shit is crazy. I'm pretty sure you're just killing brain cells when you do it, which I'm not really trying to fuck around with personally. Yeah, fuck that. I already burnt enough of those. <laughs> what made you want to uh, reach out to X4? Because uh, you worked with him real early well, on. I've been fucking with him. So when he got out, I was fucking with him too. Mm. Like, so you just going crazy. You just tapped I like in. His shit. Yeah, no, he's going crazy for he sure. Got his little flow. He be going on, talking his little shit. I've been off that loosely. Mm. That shit smack. No, definitely. Was he someone that you thought about trying to get to sign to the Stink Team or not? Nah, I know. I know he can, he in his own little world, so he can go crazy like by himself. Mm. I like to see people go crazy. I just like to see the build up and shit, you know. Right, definitely. Yeah, no, nah, his shit's been going crazy. They had a whole argument on the news the other day because somebody fuck was... the news, it's crazy. <laughs> 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 like well, like Fox Eleven. <laughs> no, our news. Oh, I was yeah. like, damn. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> if they're arguing about uh, hip hop or about X Four on the news, that would be confusing. But no, they were talking about saying Draco is like the most influential rapper oh, from yeah, L A. So. Some people were saying ever, and some people were saying the last ten years. How do you feel about that in terms of what kind of respect he deserves? I'm going to say he the hardest rapper ever, but influenced by, he got the last 10 years. Mm. For sure. Right. Mm -hmm. For sure. Like He got everybody walking around, fake, pole, high, slurring in their music, talking about crashing forms, exotic gun talk, mm. like designer drip talk. Niggas in LA wasn't really talking like that. It was more like low riders and Chevy six foes and with the forty Glock and shit like that. And the Dickies zone. and Chucks with the pro club and mm. <laughs> they wasn't really crashing forms, putting in music videos and shit, putting in as they mix they cover, shit like that. He brought like the the ignorant culture, like for so people always say like that's like some L A shit. Yeah, that's some L A shit, but. Niggas wasn't putting in the words, he put it in. 
it right. wasn't LA like anything that came out of LA before yeah. that. Yeah, and I feel like Draco, his flow has influenced people all over the country, including people who don't even realize that they're influenced by him because they're influenced yeah. by somebody else who was influenced by mm-hmm. him. So they don't even necessarily know that they're kind of doing like a version no, of his okay. shit. I have respect for somebody like X4 who realizes that his flow was definitely fucking influenced by Draco and that a lot of that and, and his whole generation really, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, hell yeah, that nigga too. He was the hardest. He influenced a lot of people. Mm. That's a fact. He put that shit on. He gonna look the iciest. Like <laughs> he gonna pull up looking crazy. <laughs> it's crazy though because that is like Drago's L.A. as fuck. But he had to. He kind of like rejected so much of what it was to be a rapper from L.A. Yeah. before that. You know, like a lot of shit sonically. He, he was on flow song. wise. He was like, yeah, we ain't trying to shoot with no palm trees and shit in mm. the background. Like, we finna show you how the hood look, the backgrounds, and pulling Dracos out in music videos, shooting at random ass spots and shit. Mm. Like, he was on some other shit. Mm. Niggas wasn't just having Dracos in music videos and shit. Like, this nigga was wild. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. I always, because uh, it, it always plays that one. What's the one freestyle with the foot? It has like a billion views. It dubs in the video with the impatient jean jacket one. on. Yeah, the impatient yeah. freestyle. Man, he was on the balcony. Mm. <laughs> this nigga. Because <Spin>, but... <laughs> that's the apartment that you guys all got raided in yeah, too, right? Yeah, I'm like, this nigga wild. <laughs> this nigga. <laughs> this nigga <laughs> going crazy. That's crazy. All right. Wh- when you want to remember Draco what what's the number one music video or number one song that you put on that really like it's just the perfect song for that see it's no perfect song but it's a lot of songs that I like Mr. Everything is one of them mm. like the the geeked up freestyle that's another one it's yeah. this song called act stupid if you wanna but that's kind of hard to find you gotta do some real digging up that's a leak right now Nah, it's a song that he dropped, like, a long time ago. But, like, people say, like, he just started rapping like that or whatever the fuck they be saying. But this song is, like, 2011, 10-ish type shit. Oh, so it's, shit. like, it's an old-ass song. Like, how y'all say he just started rapping like this? This nigga been rapping like this. He just dumbed it down. Hmm. But, yeah, act stupid if you want is a good one. And then it's too many. He got too many. Mm. Flu flaming. That's my go-to. That's the that's the that's the one of them ones. Which is crazy because like, you know, we were just rocking out to Cold Devil for so long, sure. and I Maybe. and I kind of got Maybe. used to the feeling that that was gonna be the best body of work he ever did. Shoot a baby. Oh man, <laughs> I don't go back to shoot a baby. I don't know. <laughs> With the fucking mask. And <laughs> this nigga deep. That's the one. But if you want to explain Draco to somebody, you might have to show them shoot a yeah. baby to kind of be like, listen, he, he go crazy. This dude man. is not a normal listen, dude. Man. <laughs> uh, uh, for real. Especially having kids, shoot a baby's tough to sing along to. Yeah, I don't know. Fuck. Damn. Um, all right. So yeah, it was a good conversation. I'm glad to see everything's still going well. Uh, what do you want to make sure they check out? Uh. My fucking new tape, fucking Rapper Overnight 3, dropping December 25th. Check out my new artist, Man Man, Player, and Day 3. They go crazy. Mm. And make sure you get that chief in. Yes, sir. Long live Draco, long live Catchy, keep the truth alive. Jeez, Gang and all. Right. Where do we cop the chief in heavily at? Online or at my store. I got a store downtown now. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. You gonna let me model it? I need a hoodie, man. You know, I'm give you a whole package. I'm trying to get drippy, man. I went to Melrose the other day and Dub made me change my whole outfit. He said I look like <laughs> shit. <laughs> he said, "Nigga, you need to put yeah, that yeah, shit on, nigga." <laughs> and he gave me some shoes and everything. It was actually a really cool way to get I, some free drip. I like your fit right now. You yeah. kind of dripped up right yeah, now, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Little yeah. did they know. Hey. Got oh, a sock missing. Got sh- oh, uh, stepped in some <laughs> fucking squirt. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of upset about that. Yeah. I, said, I, I got my sock in my back pocket. I think. No, uh, oh, no, I got it right here. Oh, you need to throw that away, Adam. Thing. No, no. Oh wait, where is it? Don't don't grab it. I'm getting tricked by my double pockets. <laughs> oh no, I forgot. I put it on top of a fan in the other room. All right. <laughs> All right, I appreciate y'all. Nah, uh, it's good, man. Long live the uh, ruler. Stink team forever. Yes, Erski. We out here. No Jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, Instagram. Like, comment, subscribe. Nojumper.com if you want to support. 